Okay, in this prepping practice video, uh, we're going to practice making drop biscuits uh, using a Jiffy baking mix inside of a cast iron uh, cookware using uh, a wood rocket stove. Uh, I made my rocket stove inside of my fireplace so I can uh, test this indoors. Uh, if you don't have a fireplace, <laughs> you'll need to test this outdoors. So the first thing uh, we'll end up having to do is uh, uh, mix this up into a batter. So one of the major uh, things you're going to have to learn how to do is how to cook with what you have available. If the grid does go down, uh, you're not going to have access to uh, electric stovetops, electric ovens, uh, even the gas will stop. So uh, you have to think about how you're going to cook your food. Uh, you know, I, I have uh, propane uh, in the garage. I have a propane burner. But uh, if the grid goes down, you need to think that through. How long will you have access to propane? It's not going to last that long. So uh, it makes sense to make a backup system where you can cook using wood. Uh, I also have solar uh, power in the basement. I have a, some, some solar panels and I have a solar generator. So I can uh, cook, I also have a uh, small toaster oven, so I could bake this uh, in a small toaster oven using my solar generator. But uh, if the grid goes down, it's also possible that uh, your solar equipment becomes damaged. So uh, it, it makes sense to learn how to cook uh, using wood, uh, using some simple methods. Okay, I'm going to mix this up. I'll be right back. Uh, we've got the batter all mixed up. Uh, I should also mention that uh, you know the directions on the box state to uh, mix the uh, uh, the baking mix with milk. Uh, if the grid goes down, uh, I'm going to imagine we're, we're not all going to have access to milk, so I'm just using water. So I've mixed one cup of uh, Jiffy baking mix with one third cup of water, and uh, there we go. There it is in the pan. Now what we're going to do is just drop spoonfuls. Uh, inside of our uh, uh, cast iron Dutch oven. Uh, I got this whole set from Amazon. Um, it was under $50. I'll put a link down in the description. Uh, in my opinion, this is a pretty good deal for the money. All right, I'll get those uh, drop biscuits dropped in the uh, Dutch oven, and I'll show you the results of that. Uh, we've got the uh, spoonfuls of the uh, baking mix dropped into the uh, Dutch oven. I made... Uh, five large biscuits. Uh, we're going to get the uh, rocket stove going next and uh, we're going to see if we can get these things baked up. Now, I know uh, with this Dutch oven, the method we're using right here, we're going to place the majority of the heat on the bottom of the Dutch oven. So th they're going to burn fairly easily. So uh, the Dutch oven will trap a lot of the heat inside of it. I'll be flipping them you know, over from time to time to try to pre prevent them from burning. There's a couple other methods we could use to do this, and maybe I'll make a, some more videos on those later. But for now, let's get that uh, rocket stove going. Uh, here is a two-burner rocket stove that I put together in uh, my fireplace. Uh, pretty simple. I'll put a, uh, a link to a description. Uh, I have some pictures of how I put this together, uh, if it interests you. To get this started, uh, what we're doing is we're taking uh, some a cotton ball, uh, just putting a little uh, petroleum jelly on the cotton ball. Uh, that's how we, we'll get it lit. And uh, the top of the burner, just going to drop some paper down in there, stick it all the way to the bottom. I ripped up some cardboard, stick some cardboard down in there. Next, I'm going to light the uh, cotton ball. She's going good. Oop. It's hard doing things with one hand. All right, that's getting the uh, paper lit. The cardboard should start going. Cardboard down in there. All right, I have some kindling here, some kindling there that I used uh, that I created for my 
uh, actual uh, logs. So you can see we got the fire going. Let's drop some small kindling down on the top. These rocket stoves are really easy to get going. Just using uh, small pieces of cardboard, small pieces of wood. All right, now <clears throat> I'm going to start sticking some wood in the actual uh, burning hole. Starting to go pretty good. Drop one down on the top. All right, we'll let that get going a minute. Uh, I'll put some more wood in here. I'll be back, and then we'll get the um, the Dutch oven set on top and uh, get cooking. Uh, the fire is going pretty good. We're going to set the Dutch oven on top now. All right. Now, uh, it would have been nice to have something uh, in between the top of the rocket stove and the bottom of the uh, Dutch oven to dissipate the heat. I tried it with a small metal pan, but that uh, block things and it just started smoking up. So we're just going to let it heat this way for a while. I know I also have a, a store-bought uh, item that would dissipate the heat, but uh, for now, let's just try it right in the Dutch oven. All right, we're going to let it bake for a little while. I'll be right back. Uh, what you're going to want to do here is rotate uh, the Dutch oven uh, from time to time. Let's see if the top is uh, its not that hot yet. I can do this by hand. Just rotate her every uh, minute or two. So the flame from the bottom isn't hitting the same part of the uh, Dutch oven over and over again. All right, we're going to let her go a few more minutes. Uh, of course, with the rocket stove, you have to keep adding uh, your kindling to it consistently. Uh, this type of stove, it's great It'll, uh, to allow you to cook with small amounts of wood. Uh, and literally, I could probably do this with just cardboard. Uh, but if you just chop up some small kindling or scrap pieces of wood you have laying around, don't you any, don't use any wood that's been you know, stained or painted. Um, but uh, scrap pieces of wood are you know they'll work also. Uh, just keep the flame going inside of it, and uh, you can see the flame is still coming out the top of the uh, uh, the rocket stove. This rocket stove I've only made what was it five layers of bricks high. Uh, there's two layers of bricks at the bottom that are just solid layers of brick that I put in there to uh, bring it up to this level. Um, normally you wouldn't need to do that. You would not need as many bricks as I used for this. Uh, matter of fact, the, uh, the pictures that I took when I put this together, uh, it won't show those two bottom layers of bricks because you're not going to need them. Unless you're putting it in a fireplace yourself. You, if you need to build up a, uh, a base like I did, you know, it's, it doesn't... It's kind of common sense to how to do that. Just lay some bricks down to uh, build up the, uh, the surface a few inches. All right, I am going to uh, take this off the fire for now and uh, see if uh, the biscuits are ready to be flipped over once. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, we've got the Dutch oven off the flame. Um, these are coming along pretty good. I'm going to flip them over. When you do it this way, they won't end up looking as pretty but then you don't end up burning one of the sides. So you just flip them over once in a while. Spin this around. Try to get that little one there. Sorry, I'm holding the uh, camera by hand. for this video. All right, so we've got them all flipped over. I'm gonna put the lid back on and uh, get it back into the rocket stove and uh, get some, uh, get this fire going a little bit better again. Okay, be back again. Uh, 
for me, when I want to get this fire going quickly, I just take some more of my uh, cardboard strips and I throw them in the top. That gets the flame going a little bit uh, better. Very quick and easy way to get the flame going. And then we'll stick another piece of wood in there. Flame is going pretty good again. Uh, we'll let these biscuits uh, cook a few more minutes and I'll be back. I've uh, twisted the uh, Dutch oven around, you know, several inches at a time. I've uh, uh, twisted probably a complete 360 now. She's been uh, cooking for several minutes. I'm going to take it back out and take a look at the biscuits and probably flip them over one more time now. These are coming along very nicely. I thought the bottom was going to get too hot. Uh, I guess this uh, rocket stove is actually perfect. Uh, if you don't keep the flame too high, and you use a Dutch oven, you can bake some things really nice. Look at that. It's beautiful. We could probably eat these right now, but uh, we're going to bake the other side in a few minutes. See if we can get it golden brown on the other side also. All right, they are coming along beautifully. All right, let's get it back into the rocket stove. All right, we got the Dutch oven back in the rocket stove. Flames going. We're just keeping a nice low flame here. We won't. We don't. Want, if the flames are actually blasting through the top, that's probably going to be a little too hot for what we're trying to accomplish here. I mean, if we're boiling water, we'd want to get that fire stoked good. But we're just trying to bake some uh, biscuits here at a lower temperature, so this is working out very nice. All right, uh, we'll give this a couple more minutes. We'll take them out and uh, we'll see how they look. Okay, uh, we have the Dutch oven uh, out of the. Uh, the fireplace now off the rocket stove take the lid off and they are looking beautiful let's, see. let's get these on a plate so you can see what they're looking like There we go, they came out perfect. So all this is one cup of uh, Jiffy baking mix mixed with one third cup of water. Uh, I forgot to add salt. Normally I'll add a little bit of salt that adds uh, and kicks up the flavor of these. But this is literally gonna be my breakfast. Uh, so if you liked what you saw here, uh, please like the video, uh, subscribe, and uh, check us out at uh, preppingpractice.com. All right, thanks a lot, bye-bye.